Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given to you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But the man who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. All right, welcome to our new series, Kings and Queens, and uh, we're using this to talk about stewardship in our lives. And this, uh, this Kings and Queens uh, really comes from the Chronicles of Narnia. For those of you who are familiar with the story, there's a line where Aslan says to uh, Peter and Edmund and Lucy and the crew, he says, uh, once Kings and Queens of Narnia, always Kings and Queens of Narnia. And so the, uh, the, the idea that we wanna understand and talk about is that God has, has given us um, a certain certain things in our lives that we are to be stewards of. We are to be stewards of the authority that he has given us. He has given us influence. He has given us gifts and talents and abilities. And how are we using those for his glory? Just as we uh, just sang, uh, I am who you say I am. I'm I'm a child of God. I'm a son or daughter of the king. I am a prince. I'm a princess. I'm a king. I'm a queen uh, in God's kingdom. Kingdom. And so it's that, that understanding that God has, has given us divine right and authority as a child of God uh, to, to be able to have these different resources and then to use them for his glory and for his good and for his kingdom. Not to consume them for ourselves, not to build our kingdom, but to build his kingdom. And so uh, just talking about that and and going through that, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, Luke chapter 10 this morning, uh, the the sending out of the 72. Uh, This is really an interesting story in the sense that it's the, uh, the only gospel that we uh, hear about this, this uh, encounter where the 72 are sent out. And so basically what happens is, is Jesus, he, uh, he gets the 72 together and he says, I'm gonna send you out into the towns and villages that I'm getting ready to go to. And uh, I, I want you, and he gives them specific instructions. He, he says, I want you to, uh, to, to go along the road. Don't say hi to anybody as you go. Uh, go and find a, a person of peace inside that town. Stay in their home. Don't move from house to house. Um, and and uh, gives them specific instructions about eating their food and, and, and then sends them out. And I think it's an important message for us in the church today because uh, we also know that Jesus also sent out the, the 12 disciples. And that's in multiple gospels, that account of Jesus sending out the 12 disciples. But I think we can look at that in the church and we can think, oh, those, that's the disciples. That's the apostles. That's the, that's the super spiritual. That's like, that's, that's just the leaders. That's just the staff. That's just the, just, that's just the elders. 
But when we see this story of the 72, we realize that these were all Jesus' followers. I mean, uh, you, you know, you get through, it's kind of like uh, Jesus picks the 12, he, he talks to a large group on, on, uh, on the side of the mountain, and, and then he's got, you know, just uh, some of these followers left and, and sends out whatever he's got left, these 72. And so it's, it's a good message for us to remember that God is sending each and every one of us out. He's, he's given each and every one of us authority and influence and gifts and talents and abilities. And that it's not just this great commission that Jody just read for us. It's not just the church leaders and, and pastors and staff. It's that a calling that God has given to all of us. And, and when Jesus says that uh, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples, he's, the implication is I'm giving that authority to you and that you are to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. That that, that, uh, that authority has been given to you as a child of God. I was thinking about uh, uh, talking about this idea of, of uh, authority and uh, I was reminded of a, a story I actually shared last night um, uh, about a bully, and, and uh, somebody was offended by it. So I won't I won't share it this morning. But uh, but basically the point is is that that you have a divine right to defend yourself. And and I'm I'm not saying uh, to, that I'm encouraging you know physical violence, and 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 that's a that's a different um, uh, topic altogether. But but in spiritually you have a divine right to defend yourself. Yourself, and that uh, one of Satan's main ploys is to be a bully, to tell you that you can't do that, you can't say that, you can't pray that, that, that that's, that's not who you are, right? That's one of his main ploys is that he is the deceiver, he's the liar. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you do have authority, that God has given you power to be able to proclaim the gospel, to pray, to, to pray for somebody's healing, to, uh, to proclaim the kingdom of God, to tell people about Jesus, that God has given you authority. And so we're going to examine that this morning and, and what that looks like in our lives. As we look at uh, Luke chapter 10, it says, uh, After this the Lord appointed 72 others, and he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. Then he told them, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. So this is what he does first. Is he, he sends them out. He, he sends them out. And uh, he's sending Right, it's this this uh, this Greek word ekbalo. It's to thrust out, to to actually um, uh, forcefully expel. Right, that's what we're pr we're praying. And 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 part of uh, understanding the persecution of the early church. Right, that was God actually forcing them out. Like, okay, they have to leave. They have to spread this message to the ends of the earth because they are forced to. We want to pray that God will forcefully send out people into the harvest field. That, that is what he is doing, is sending people out to proclaim his good news and the message of his salvation. And then uh, we see these specific instructions as we're looking at Luke chapter 10. I won't go into all the specific instructions, uh, but then the next thing that we see is in verse 9 uh, where we get into uh, his command for saving, and that is he says, Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. So that you have authority to pray for people to be healed. You have authority to tell them that the kingdom of God has come, that, that Jesus has died and risen again. You have authority to tell people that they need to be uh, saved and, and baptized, that they need to repent of their sins, that you have the authority to be able to do this. 
grace. You have authority uh, over your own life. And, and, and uh, let me just say as an aside that we don't necessarily want to uh, overstep our authority, right? We have to understand our position of authority and, and where that is in Christ because we know that um, in our own lives, Right, that, uh, that we have spiritual authority, but there are also uh, different levels of authority, whether that's, you know, principalities or authority that God gives people in the church, and we see that throughout Scripture. If you remember the story about the sons of Sceva, you know, they go and they try and cast out demons, and, uh, and the demons say, well, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but we haven't heard of you. And so it's not just this casual, like, okay, I authority. I can, you know, go anywhere I want into, you know, uh, uh, super uh, dark spiritual places, and I can just, you know, uh, you know, exercise any type of authority. No, we need to understand that there are levels of authority. There, just as there, there are levels of authority in God's kingdom, there are levels of authority in Satan's kingdom, and we have to understand that we do have authority in our own lives for sure, and then we have to evaluate, okay, where is our spiritual authority beyond that? And, and just uh, being wise about that, because even in the book of Jude, it talks about that even the archangel uh, Michael, uh, is it Michael or Gabriel? I think it's Michael. Uh, that he, even the archangel Michael says... Uh, the Lord rebuke you to the devil. He doesn't say that in my own authority that I come against you. He says, the Lord rebuke you. And that's the archangel Michael. So, so this, this understanding of authority is that, that we have it, but we also need to understand and measure that. That, that doesn't mean that this just, you know, you have uh, just a, a get out of jail free card that you have authority over, you know, uh, Satan himself and demon, whatever. You have authority in your own lives to declare healing and protection and blessing and to come against anybody who would come against you spiritually, right? To stand up for yourself, and to defend yourself and your family, that you have that divine right in that and that authority um, to, to pray for the sick, to, um, to proclaim the kingdom of God, to declare repentance. All right, so that's the, uh, the second uh, point there. And then, uh, uh, then we get into the next one there, which is um, an, an interesting uh, concept. It's really the sad truth. Um, of what Jesus is saying here because he's sending these 72 out and he's saying um, go proclaim the kingdom of God tell them to repent uh, tell them to, to turn to God but he says if they don't he said um, that, uh, that you're actually supposed to tell them that, uh, that it's not going to go well for them he says uh, wipe off the dust of your feet uh, in their city and in their town and, and declare to them that it will actually uh, be worse for them than for Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, ooh, that's, that's pretty bad. Like, we know how bad it was for Sodom, right? And, and uh, we actually, through this passage of Scripture, I share in the book that I wrote this, uh, this truth that there are consequences for cities and regions and nations, that it's not just individuals that will ultimately stand before Christ in their stewardship, but there will be an accountability uh, that we don't, t we don't uh, get a lot of understanding about in Scripture, but Jesus says here that there will be accountability for cities and regions and nations, and he says that uh, uh, it will will be more to tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will go down to Hades. You will go down to hell. How does a whole city or a whole region go down to hell? Is he talking about the people? Uh, but but the, the point is that there is an accountability here that even Jesus talks about uh, beyond individual for cities and regions and nations that we see that Jesus is talking about here. And he, and he says, whoever listens to you being the 72 that he's sending out, right? So if you declare the gospel to somebody, if you tell somebody about Jesus, right? Jesus is saying, whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Who is the one who sent him? The Father, right? And so it, it gives us encouragement. It gives us strength that 
we don't take those things personally. When somebody says, oh, I don't believe that, or you're, you're crazy, or uh, you know, Christians are just a bunch of hypocrites, or what, whatever, it, it gives us encouragement to say, you know what, um, they're not rejecting me. They're rejecting the message, and, and ultimately, who are they rejecting? They're rejecting Jesus, and they're rejecting the Father. That's the sad truth of it. And so it, it gives us encouragement and strength to be able to, to proclaim the message and to uh, do what God is asking us to do. And so that's the sad truth. And then uh, he tells us um, uh, that, uh, that Satan actually fell. If, if you go down to uh, verse 17 and pick up there of uh, Luke chapter 10, it says, the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And then um, he said to them, I watched Satan fall uh, from heaven like lightning. And uh, it's an interesting statement that Jesus makes here. The, the disciples are just super excited, right? They're coming back and they're like, people got healed, people turned to God, uh, even the demons submitted to us, and they're just super excited. And then Jesus makes this statement. He says, I saw Satan falling from heaven. And it's just, you know, okay, to the commentators looking at that, was it that Jesus was talking about that that particular time that he saw that there was some type of power that was being taken away from Satan? Or was he, was he foreshadowing the cross and resurrection or was he talking about the the ultimate victory that is going to become when Satan is bound and thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever and and maybe it's all three right because that's how prophecy works is that there's usually multiple levels of of interpretations in and f fulfillment but Jesus says that he saw Satan falling from heaven and uh, then he continues on saying, look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will by any means harm you. And so it's interesting because Jesus doesn't tell uh, the 72 he doesn't give them the, the motivation or instruction before they go. He tells them what to do, right? He gives them specific instructions. Do this, do this, do this, don't do this. But he doesn't tell them before they go about the authority that he's giving them. It's almost like a surprise, right? They come back kind of surprised, joy-filled, like even the demons submitted. But then when they come back, he, he sits them down and he explains to them. He says, uh, th what happened was that you need to understand something, that, that I gave you authority, and that's why the demons submitted to you. That's why uh, people came to the kingdom of God. It wasn't your own strength. It wasn't anything that you said or did. It was because I gave you authority. And it's that understanding that, remember, this is the 72. This isn't just the 12. He's communicating the same thing to you this morning. I've given you authority. I've given, you I've given you authority in your circumstances, in your surroundings, in your sphere of influence. You have authority to proclaim the word of God, to pray for people to be healed, for, uh, for declaring the good news of the kingdom and, and sharing the message of repentance. Well, what about when, when we don't see that authority manifest. What about when our prayers aren't answered? What about when, you know, we pray for people and they still die? What about, you know, when, when people don't receive that message of salvation and, and, and we just continue in faith, right? That's what God calls us to do. He says to continue to be in faith until he comes again. We don't always understand all the circumstances or how things work out, but God asks us to continue to exercise that authority. That word authority in the Greek is exousia. You're, you're exercising that authority and you're actually realizing that you have it. He says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So he's, he's not necessarily talking about physical snakes and scorpions. He's saying spiritually, anything that the enemy is trying to throw at you, I give you authority to trample on it. I give you authority to overcome it. I give you authority to defeat it. You have a divine right to defend yourself. You have a divine right to stand up uh, to the spiritual bully in your life. 
that you don't have to take that. And we measure that, right? This whole message uh, of authority and being kings and queens also needs to be measured against being a servant of Christ, right? Because we, we are kings and queens, and, and God has given us authority, but yet at the same time, we, we follow our master Jesus, uh, who submitted himself to everything before God. And so we also recognize our humility in, in our grace before, before God and for Christ. So we, 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 um, we balance those two realities. But I think a lot of times in traditional denominations especially, we don't realize our authority. We understand our humility, we understand the sacrifice, we understand the service, but we don't understand the authority that we've been given. And, and Jesus clearly says, I have given you authority. And then he, uh, he basically ends there in, uh, in verse 20, um, you know, basically saying, you know, be sober-minded. Uh, however, don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And, and I'll just uh, end here. Um, that, uh, that this is the focus that Jesus, you know, he's having this conversation, okay? What happened was is that I gave you authority, um, and, and he's saying, you know, hey, hey, it's great that you're excited, you know, this is really awesome that people are turning to God and that people are being healed and set free and the demons are submitting to you, but focus here for a second, right? Listen, listen, everybody pay attention, all right? It's not about the success of the ministry, it's about the fact that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And no matter what God does in your life, no matter how he blesses your influence or your authority or your gifts and talents, give God praise, give God glory, but that's not what it's about. It's about the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what we get excited about. That's what we uh, ultimately celebrate. That's what the Bible tells us, that the angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner who repents because somebody's name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what's to be our focus. That's what's to be our, our ultimate goal. And we do appreciate and use and be good stewards of the authority that God has given us, right? As long as we have breath and, and even in our circumstances today, right? No matter what your political leanings are, whether you're happy or sad, no matter what uh, circumstances we're in with pandemic, right? It's not an excuse to be like, okay, well, I'm gonna check out for a little while. Like, it's just, there's, there's no hope. It's not, I can't really make it different. I mean, what, what difference is it going to make anyways? No, that's, that's not what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to use whatever uh, authority we have, whatever influence, whatever gifts, talents, and abilities we have, as long as we have to use them to be faithful and a good steward with what God has given us. But in the end, to rejoice and to focus on your salvation and not in your gifts and your abilities. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, giving Jesus all authority that he said all authority had been given to him. And thank you, Lord, that you share that authority with us, that we can proclaim the good news of the gospel, that we can uh, preach your kingdom is here, that we can tell uh, people to repent from their sins, that we can pray for them to be healed, that we can have authority in our own lives to defend ourselves and to stand up for truth and, justiceness and justice and righteousness. Lord, we thank you uh, for that authority. We pray that you would release authority in your people today. Release authority in your church, oh God. Release authority in the kingdom of God throughout the United States of America. Release that authority, God, to be able to preach your gospel, to see people healed and set free for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, release your authority in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.